Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the grid and snapping in Reaper. If we look over here in the arrangement window, these vertical lines are the grid. And we can turn them on and off in our toolbar right here with this button. Turn it off and it hides that grid. Turn it on and it shows the grid. We could also do it with a keyboard shortcut. On PC, it's Alt G, and on Mac, it's Option G. Just hit that to hide it or show it that easily. Now to check out the settings that go with the grid, we could right click the button, which opens up this dialog, or we could use the keyboard shortcut on PC, Alt L, and a Mac, Option L. That also opens up this dialog. And the grid settings are all up here. We could turn them on and off from here, which is the same thing as the toolbar button or the keyboard shortcut. But we could also change the size of the grid. Right now it's set to quarter notes, but we could switch it to 16th notes. And it looks like this. Full measures. And it looks like this. Frames. And it looks like this. Or anything in between. Let's put it back to quarter notes. And we could also create a swing grid over here. So if we set it to 16th notes, which looks like this, let's zoom in, turn on the swing grid. And that's going to adjust the 16th notes to be closer together in a swing pattern like this. See how it changes? When it's straight, it looks like this. And we could swing it to look like this. And we could also change the items on the grid to readjust themselves to the grid setting right over here. Let's create a few items. And if we turn this option on, when we readjust our swing grid, the items are going to change with it, like this. Very helpful for changing our swing on the fly when our items are on the grid. Let's put it back to normal straight mode. There's a bunch of actions we could trigger to readjust our grid. Let's go to the actions list right here. Let's type in grid. There's a bunch of actions we could use to readjust our grid. Change the grid size to different values. But there's two actions that I find really helpful. This one cuts it in half, and this one doubles it. By default, there's no keyboard shortcut to trigger these, but I set up a few right here. But the benefit of using these actions is we can trigger those keyboard shortcuts on the fly to readjust very quickly the size of our grid. Make it smaller or bigger using keyboard shortcuts. Very helpful. So now let's take a look at snapping. Right next to the grid button over here is the snapping button. We can turn it on and off from here in the toolbar. We use the keyboard shortcut Alt S on the PC or Option S on the Mac to toggle it on or off. Let's open up a guitar track so we can see how snapping works. With snapping turned off, and we grab this item and move it around, it doesn't snap to our grid. We can move it around freely on the timeline. But if we turn on snapping, now it snaps perfectly to the grid based on the start of our items, like this. We can readjust how that works using the same dialog as before. We're up here deals with the grid, down here deals with snapping. And we can turn it on and off from here 
which does the same thing as using the toolbar or the keyboard shortcut. Now, the first thing I want to show you in this dialog is this option right here. Snap to grid at any distance. By default, it's on, but I think this feature is more powerful with it off. Let me show you. If we turn it off, but snapping is still on, if we move our item around, it doesn't snap to our grid unless we get real close. In this situation, it's set up by default to be four pixels. But we could set it to any value we want. I'm going to set it to 15, which will make it more sensitive. So now, if I move the item within 15 pixels, it's going to snap to the grid like this, almost like the grid is magnetic. But anything in between, I could still place it off the grid. So it won't snap to the grid unless we get close to the grid line, like this. And then it snaps perfectly on the grid. I think that's more flexible than having this option turned on, which is on by default. Now the option over here, grid snap settings follow grid visibility, is also on by default. This is going to make it so our grid and our snapping work together. Again, it's on by default. So when we snap our items, it's based on the grid, which is quarter notes right now. If we set it to eighth notes, it's going to snap to eighth notes. Or if we hide our grid, it's not going to snap to anything. So our snapping and our grid are tied together, but we can make them independent. If we turn off this option, we could set up snapping over here. We could set it to eighth notes with our grid at quarter notes and turned on. So now we see a quarter note grid, but it's going to snap to eighth notes. So our snapping and our grid are completely separate. In fact, we could turn off the grid or hide it and still snap to eighth notes. Or whatever setting we set up over here. But again, by default, this is turned on, so they're going to work together, which is what I recommend for most beginners. It just keeps things simpler. And we can turn the grid on and off when we want to snap our items. Just hide the grid and no snapping occurs. Now we could also snap relative to the grid. Let me give you an example. Let's zoom in to the guitar. Notice it starts a bit later. So if we snap it to the grid, it's still going to play back a bit late. So we can move it earlier. So it'll be more in time. But now if we move it to a different bar, it's now going to play late again, unless we turn on this option, snap relative to grid. So now if we move the item, notice we get two lines down here, one that shows the start of the item and the other where it's going to be placed on the grid. So if we move it over here, it still snaps to the grid but not based on the start time. So it's now relative to the grid. Here, here, or here. So the guitar is going to start in time, but we can move it from bar or beat to beat, relative to the grid. And also notice the toolbar button changes. This is what it looks like when it's relative to the grid. And this is what it looks like in normal snapping mode. This whole section over here decides what variables are going to snap. This first row is dedicated to our selection, markers, and cursor. So let's create a time selection, a marker, and put our cursor over here. So now our media items are going to snap to selections, markers, and the cursor. So not only 
Is it going to snap to the grid like this and this? But it's also going to snap to time selections at the end and the beginning, but also markers and the play or edit cursor right here. And that's on. By default, we could turn it off right here. We could do the same thing for selections, dealing with markers and the cursor. So if we create a time selection, it's still going to snap to our grid, but it's also going to snap to our markers and the play or edit cursor. And that's based on this one. And the cursor is going to snap to our selections and our markers. So if I place the cursor over here, it doesn't snap. But if I place it here, it snaps to the end or the beginning of our time selection and also on our markers. And that's based on this option over here, which is on by default. And this row decides what snaps to our grid. Again, we have media items, which obviously we want to snap to the grid. But we could also choose selection and cursor which again are on by default. So if we create a time selection with snapping on, it's gonna to snap to our grid for the beginning and the end. And the same thing with our play or edit cursor. It's gonna snap right on the grid. And that's set up in this row right here. Then we have the option over here, which decides what side it's gonna snap from. By default, it's going to snap the start and snap offset. So the start of the item is going to snap to our grid, like you'd expect. But what's not going to happen is the end of our item is not going to snap. It doesn't snap to the grid. But that can be useful for certain reverse effects. So if you want that, just switch it to snap at both the start and the end. And now it's going to snap at the beginning like this, but also snap at the end like this, which can be confusing if we have too many different things snapping, which is why I prefer the third option, mouse position dependent. If we choose this, if we put our mouse on the first half of our item at the front, the start of the item is going to snap. But if we put our mouse on the back end of the item, the end is going to snap. So it's very useful if you deal with a lot of reverse effects. And that's the mouse position dependent. But by default, it's set here to only snap at the start or the snap offset. And then this option is also on by default which is going to snap our items based on nearby items up to 10 tracks away. So by default, not only will the items snap to the grid, they're also going to snap to each other. So we can move this one to line up with this one or this one. We'll move this one to line up with any of them, along with the grid, which makes it a lot easier to line up our items. But it's also going to make it so it snaps quite often. If you don't want that behavior, just turn this off. Now it's only going to snap to the grid, but not to the other items. Or we could choose less tracks away. So we could change this to one track. Now it's only going to snap to this one, like this. It's not going to snap to this track or this one. But again, it's on by default and it's set to 10 tracks. And then down over here, we could also decide if our automation items are going to snap to other automation items or to media items. These are both on by default, but if we don't want that behavior, we can just turn them off right here. Now, one of the best things about snapping in Reaper is that we could bypass it all by holding down the shift key. For example, with snapping turned on, it's going to snap to our grid, 
just like this. But if at any point we don't want it to snap to the grid, just hold down shift. And now snapping is turned off or bypassed. So in that situation, we never have to turn off snapping. We could always leave it on and work this way. Just leave it on and set up our grid, make it bigger or smaller. And if we want our items to snap, just drag them around and they'll snap to the grid. But if we want to bypass that behavior or turn off snapping, just hold down shift and the items no longer snap. So with this method, we can leave snapping on all the time. So that's pretty much it. That's the grid and snapping in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.